In this video, we're going to take a look at the different types of errors that we might see in an experiment. And we're also going to look at how to record uncertainties and how to propagate those uncertainties through our calculations. So let's start with the types of errors. There are two main types. The first is systematic errors. And these types of errors affect the accuracy of the experiment. So what this means is that it affects all measurements in the same way in that the measurements are either all too high or they're all too low. It is not revealed by repeated measurements, which means we can do as many trials as possible and we would never see this error being revealed to us in those measurements. Sometimes you can eliminate them, but the problem with that is that they're really difficult to quantify and they're difficult to see unless you know that they are there and it, they are valid forms of errors. So they're really due to two sort of main things. First is miscalibrations or faulty or damaged equipment. So maybe you're using a stopwatch but it's always running two seconds slow or maybe you you're using a ph meter that hasn't been calibrated properly um, the other reason that you might see these is because of poor experimental technique or human error now we never refer to human error in our lab reports scientists never report this instead what they do is they repeat the experiment and they repeat it more carefully the other type of errors that we see are random errors, and these affect the precision of the experiment. So what it means by a random error is that measurements are affected randomly. Some are too high, some are too low. The nice thing about these is that they are revealed by repeated measurements. So you can do multiple trials and you will see this error in your measurements. They can never be uh, eliminated, but they can always be quantified by recording the uncertainty of the piece of equipment. Okay, so random errors are really just due to the precision of the equipment, and this is typically given by the manufacturer. So if we're recording random errors, then uh, like I said previously, these are due to the uncertainty of the equipment. And they're usually given by the manufacturer of the equipment. And if not, the general rule of thumb is if it is analog, so that means like a ruler or something else that you're measuring that is not digital, the uncertainty is plus or minus half of the smallest division. So if your ruler has 0.1 divisions, the uncertainty would be plus or minus 0.05. If you have a digital piece of equipment, you can record the uncertainty as plus or minus the smallest measure. So if you have a scale that measures to two decimal places and measures in 0 0.01 increments, the uncertainty would be plus or minus 0 0.01. The uncertainty is recorded um, to the same number of decimal places as your measured value. So that's something else to kind of keep in uh, mind as you're doing your measurements as well. Okay, so now in terms of errors, we also have something called absolute versus relative percentage errors. And so if we take a look at this pencil measurement here, it's measuring 5.65. So we can measure the 5.6 accurately, and then we're guessing the 0 0.05 on there. So that's why our uncertainty is plus or minus 0 0.05 we would say the absolute error for this measurement is 0.05 centimeters. So what this really means is it's giving us a range of how big this pencil is. The pencil is measuring between 5.60 and 5.70 centimeters. Now the relative or percentage error is calculated by taking the absolute error divided by the measurement and multiplying by 100%. So in this case, we take the 0.05 divided by 5.65 and multiplying by 100 gives us a 0.88% relative error for this measurement. Now, 
we can take those absolute and percent or relative errors and we can propagate those uncertainties as we're working through different calculations of measured values. There are two key rules when it comes to propagating uncertainties. The first rule is that when we're adding or subtracting measurements, we add the absolute uncertainties. Our second rule is when we're multiplying or dividing measurements, we add the relative uncertainties. So the difference is whether we're adding absolute or we're adding relative uncertainties, and that depends on the type of calculation we are doing. Please note that the uncertainty of a calculation is always going to be bigger than individual uncertainties because you are adding them together. Let's take a look at two quick examples then of how this works and we'll go from there. So first off, when we're, we've got measured values that are added or subtracted. So in this example, we have an initial temperature and we have a final temperature and we're trying to find the temperature change between 27.9 and 20.1 degrees Celsius. So we are subtracting values here. To get the uncertainty for this calculated value, we need to take the two absolute uncertainties of 0.1 and add them together to get 0.2. So our final calculated value is 7.8 plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius. So those are pretty easy to do. Gets a bit trickier when multiplying or dividing. So in this calculation, I've just shown up here the E equals MCT just to show you what this calculation is actually doing. Doesn't really matter right now. The idea though here is that the mass and the temperature are being multiplied and this C value is a constant value. So we're not worried about uncertainties for that one. Now because we're multiplying the mass and the temperature, we do need to first convert the percent uncertainties or the absolute uncertainties into relative or percentage uncertainties. So for the mass, we take the 0 0.001 divided by the mass measurement times 100, which gives us 0 0.0183%. If we do the same for temperature, we're taking the 0.2 uncertainty, dividing by 27.8, which is our measurement, times 100, which gives us 0.7%. Now we're in a place where we can add the two uncertainties together. So that gives us about 0.72. I wouldn't round it off here, but it's just showing rounded off for now. And then whenever you have a relative uncertainty that you've calculated for a calculation, you always need to switch it back to an absolute uncertainty. So to do that here, what we're gonna do is take our percent 0.72 divided by 100 to get it back into decimal form, and then we multiply it by our final calculated answer of 55.8 to give us 0.4, uh, plus or minus 0.4 as our absolute uncertainty. So our final answer then would be 55.8 plus or minus 0.4 joules for this particular calculation. So a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. Uh, you just kind of need to follow the steps. There are just a few more steps. And if you need to go back and rewatch that section again, make sure that you do. The last point I want to point out here is that you can also calculate a percent um, error for your experiment, and that's the difference between the experimental and theoretical results. You do that by taking the experimental result minus the theoretical result divided by the theoretical result and multiply it by 100. And what's nice about this calculation then is you can take this percent error and you can look at whether it's larger or not than the total uncertainty in your measurement. If the experimental, uh, experimental error is larger, then random error alone can't explain the discrepancy. And so what that means is systematic errors must be involved. So that allows you to go back and identify maybe what some of those systematic errors might be. Okay, so that was a quick whirlwind of errors and uncertainties. Now what we're going to do is move on to the next task.